Hi, welcome to our Dataflex Studio Tour. The studio offers all features you need to build a business application. This video highlights the main components for building a web application. We will discuss the following steps in this video. Dataflex in a nutshell, the start sender, the workspace dashboard, the table explorer, the source editor, web app designer, compile and run, find and files, the to-do list and the tools menu. In another video, we've already showed you how to build a bucket list application with Dataflex. That application is our basis for this studio tour. It might be convenient to watch the bucket list video before or after you've watched this video. Let's get started. First, what can you say about Dataflex in a nutshell? Dataflex is an easy to learn programming language and framework. With one single language, one studio and one framework, you develop and deploy applications for desktop browsers, mobile devices and Windows PCs. Important for every Dataflex application are the business rules. They define table relationships and manage database operations. All, the, all business rules are stored in a central repository called data dictionaries. By centralizing business logic, changes made in a business rule propagate throughout the entire application. And all of these business rules and data dictionaries are created and managed within the Dataflex Studio. So, let's take a look at the studio. When you open the Dataflex Studio, the first thing you see is the Start Center. The Start Center gives you information about what's new in the Dataflex world and it provides you an easy way of opening recently used workspaces. We see those workspaces on the left here and on the right of that we see online resources like news items, uh, getting started which points you into the help and online resources that go directly into the forums and the videos that we're seeing right now. We're going to open the bucket list workspace that we have created during our previous video. The first thing we see when we open a workspace is the workspace dashboard. The dashboard provides you a lot of information about the workspace that you've just opened. On the left here we're seeing the projects and in this case our workspace has one project. The current project is then the webapp.src project. A workspace can have multiple projects and then you will see a higher number here. To the right of that we see the database information and in this case we have three different tables and three data dictionaries. You can also have managed connections here that are the connections to your SQL databases. On the right of that we're seeing the components and the components in this case shows that we have four different views in our workspace. To see what views we have we can use the workspace explorer, that's the panel here on the right that shows us the different projects and if we expand one of the projects we're seeing that we have four different views. These are basically the files that are a part of your workspace. Then we have the open items and the open items show you the to-do items, so basically things that you still need to work on. The workspace summary is the last tile here on our dashboard and it shows information about how the workspace is registered and where it is located on the hard drive. In this case we see that the web application name is the bucket list. That is the name that the web app server knows this workspace by. The next thing we're going to be looking at is the table explorer. We open the table explorer using the view menu and click on table explorer. The table explorer is a panel that is usually on the left side of the studio and it shows us all the tables that are part of your file list. Basically the tables that are part of your workspace. If we take a closer look at one of the tables here, we see that we have a bucket item table. And if we expand it, we see information about this table, like the columns, indexes, relationships and connection. In this case, it is an embedded Dataflex table, so the connection shows us that the driver is Dataflex. If it would be a SQL table, it would show you information about the SQL server and how it's, connect, it's connecting to that, to that server. If we double click on the table, we're going into the table editor. The table editor shows us the columns of the table, the data types, and it allows us to change these columns. If you scroll down here, we see the different indexes that are available on this table, and the indexes are the different ways of sorting this table. Basically, an index is a combination of fields that determines the sort order. Mm -hmm. 
We can also see what data is in the table by right-clicking on the table and going to View Table. This basically shows us a list of the records that are in the table and we can also edit the records directly here by clicking the Edit button here and just changing data. If I now double-click on a column, it shows us the cursor and we can just edit. Each table usually has a data dictionary. It can actually have more data dictionaries, but in this case it has a single data dictionary. So if we expand the data dictionary section in the Table Explorer, we see a single data dictionary. Opening that data dictionary opens the data dictionary editor that shows us the settings for the different columns of this table. So in this case, for example, the title column is required. We see that in the list of data entry options where it says required is true. We can change that directly here, um, but we're not going to do that right now. A table can also have validation objects and structures, and structures basically tells it which other tables are required for saving this table. In this case, it only shows the system table, which it needs for its auto numbering field. From the, table, the data dictionary editor, we can actually go into the source mode to see the source code of this data dictionary. We do that by clicking F7. Now we see the source code for this data dictionary. Within Dataflex, a data dictionary is simply a class within the language. To take a closer look at the source editor, we're going to open a different file, in this case the Zoom Bucket Item view. This is a view within our application, and when we look at the source code here, we're seeing that we're defining an object called OZoom Bucket Item view, which is a, a C web view. We're setting several properties, like uh, setting the caption to bucket item. And down here, we're seeing different data dictionaries being defined and user interface elements. These, these objects are nested into each other, and in here we have a panel with different forms and an edit control. The different components of the studio all work together. And for example, the code explorer will show us the structure of the file that we have opened. We can expand the tree here and see the objects that are defined within the source code. You can actually click on the objects or double click them to have the cursor jump to that specific object in the source code. You will also see that the properties panel has also selected this object now. If we change one of the properties here, for example, set PB, where is it? For example, if we set PB read only to true, we will see that it now has added a line to our source code setting this property to true. There is also a thing in the editor called code sense. So if you try to type a line, for example, set PB read only. You'll see that it shows a list of the different options that are available and you can browse through them with the cursor keys and select one of them. This helps you by correctly typing the names that are available. You can open this, uh, this code sense editor using control space or just by starting to type. The next step is to go into the designer, and we do this by pressing F7 on the keyboard. This opens up the designer, which is a panel that can be docked to the studio, but it can also float on top of the studio, which is how I prefer to use it. The designer works together with the rest of the studio, so if you click on one of the controls within the designer, you will see that the Code Explorer also highlights this control, and the Properties panel does this as well. If you double click on one of the controls here, you see that the code editor actually jumps to this object within, uh, within the source code. Within the designer, we can uh, change the, uh, the, the user interface, we can resize objects, and we can actually move them around by dragging them, and the uh, arrow indicates where the object will go. We can also create new objects by dragging them from the class palette. And we can actually drag them onto the source code, but in this case we're going to drag onto the designer. 
Again, the indicator will show where the object will appear as soon as we release the mouse. So in this case, I'm dragging in a new form and putting that in the middle of our view. Now that we have our form here, we can customize it. Uh, we can use the properties panel for that. So it is selected. So now on the properties panel, we see that we're edit editing O Web Form 1. So we can give it a, a more meaningful name, like O Extra Detail. And we can also change properties like the caption or the label. The designer will immediately, immediately reflect these changes and the changes will also be visible in the source code like we saw before. If you take a closer look at the properties panel, you'll see that some items are highlighted and some are not. What it means is uh, highlighted items are set on the object, while non-highlighted items have their default value that they got from the class. In this case, this object is based on the C-Web form class. Another interesting panel within our application is the DDO Explorer. The DDO Explorer can be found in the View menu under DDO Explorer and shows up as a panel, usually at the same place as our Properties panel. It shows the DDO structure, the structure of data dictionary objects within our view, and from here we can also drag new fields onto the view. So for example, if you would want to have uh, another instance of the title field and uh, the check field, we can just drag them by selecting them here and dragging them onto the view. It will generate the data entry objects that belong to these table fields, and this uh, is an easy way of quickly designing a view. Now that we've made changes to our application, the next step is to compile and run our application. First, I'll close the designer, and then I'll compile the application using the compile project button. On the output panel, we see the progress of our compile, and if we would have made errors, they would have been shown here on the output panel. If we take a closer look, we see that it first stops the application, then it compiles the application, and then it starts it again. We can also test run our application using the Run button, which will open the browser showing our application. Now we can click on one of the items and see the changes that we have made to the zoom view. Here we see the changes that we just made. And um, if we go back to the studio, we see that the studio has changed into the debug mode. That means that it has closed several panels and it has opened the debug panels. By default, the debug layout looks like this. I'm going to put in a breakpoint on one of the buttons of our application to show you how these panels work. We won't go into too much detail because that would be an entire video on its own. So now I've changed, I've put a breakpoint on the save button. So first we go into edit mode. And now if we make a change here, and we're going to click the save button, we see that it hits the breakpoint and that the panels are filled with information. For example, we see the call stack showing us where it came from, and we're seeing the locals showing the variables that are defined within this function. In this case, not so much and we see the different tables, including their current values. Other panels are watches and globals and uh, breakpoints. And uh, like I mentioned, this will be a video on its own. So we're going to stop debugging now. The next thing we're going to be looking at is the find in files function of the studio. We're going to open up the dialog by going to text, find, and then find in files. You can also use Control shift f And in this case, we're going to be searching for bucket. You can configure the files that are going to be searched using the options below. And you can either choose to search the current project or search the directories that are listed. And you can do that using the directories listed below function here. If you click all source paths, it will add the paths that your project uses files from, so it will search all the files that are available to the project. We're going to use the current project files only option in this case. If you click find all, 
it will go through the files and it will search for the term that you have been looking for. And in this case, we're seeing that it finds data dictionaries and views and everything that we, uh, we need. If you expand one of the uh, results, you'll see the exact lines of code where the, the term is being used. So in this case, for example, the caption is being set to PS, uh, or PS caption is being set to bucket item. This is an easy way of navigating around your workspace and you will find that it's uh, something that you're going to be use, uh, using on a regular basis. Another handy feature that is available in the studio are to-do items. You can add to-do items to your source code by just typing uh, slash slash to-do. Or you can add them using control T, which add this for you. So if you have a to-do item, for example, I need to clean up this view. You just add it to your source code and then Later on, you can go to the, uh, the to-do list, which is a panel within your studio, and it will list all the to-do items that are available within your project. This tells you that you need to clean up your view. The workspace dashboard will also tell you that there is one unresolved to-do item, and uh, you see that under open items. So if you click on it, it opens the to-do list, and you see what to-do items you're still, you still have. Now that we've learned a little more about the studio, I'm going to show you one final thing, which is the tools menu. The tools menu shows an overview of all the tools that are installed with Dataflex. For example, the database builder, but also the database explorer. The database explorer is a separate tool that allows you to view the tables and the contents of your tables. Uh, and this tool is also installed uh, when you install a client runtime at a customer site. In this case, we can click on the bucket item table because it has automatically opened the workspace and we see the data of the bucket list items in this application. Note that you can also customize the tools menu. You can add new items using the configure tools menu. I hope that this video gives you a head start in building your own applications using the studio. Now you know the basic elements of the Dataflex Studio and their functionality. The Studio is fully configurable, so it allows you to customize every component and ensure that it's optimal for your workspace. To see how we built the bucket list application that we've used as an example, click on the link in the description. See you next time.